Here in section 1.2, we look at the language of sets. This is an introductory section in which some preliminary information about sets, notation, terminology are introduced. There's a later chapter in the book that we'll explore um, a little further down the road here. Um, but this will set some groundwork um, that we'll need throughout the course. So a set is a collection of elements. One important piece of notation here is how to say that something is an element of a set. And this is the notation for that. If we want to say X is not an element of S, okay, we have the same symbol there with a slash through it. Now, one of the things we'll talk about here is how to write out a set, how to describe what a set is. And one way to do that is simply by listing the elements. Okay, so some examples of that um, are this first set that contains the elements A, B, and C. Um, sometimes we use an ellipses because we don't want to write out every element, but we can establish what the pattern is and um, use the ellipses to sort of abbreviate things a bit. Um, so we've got the integers from 1 through 10 in that second set. Um, another way that we can describe a set is with set builder notation. And set builder notation is something that is very frequently used when it would be difficult to list the elements of the set. Or sometimes just to emphasize you know, what is required for something to be in the set. So here's an example of set builder notation. Um, this is describing the set that consists of real numbers such that their square is greater than or equal to four. So if I were to read that, I would say all real numbers x such that x squared is greater than or equal to 4. That vertical line there that comes after the, the bold r, we interpret that as meaning such that. So always after that vertical bar, we have some condition given. In general, set builder notation looks like this. It's all elements x in s such that p of s, p of x, rather. Okay, so let's talk about some familiar sets of numbers. Uh, the real numbers appeared on the previous slide there. Um, real numbers. Um, you'll, the way that you'll see it in the textbook is this capital boldface R. There's another common notation. You won't see that in this textbook, but it's pretty common in other sources with this, uh, this other font. Sometimes it's uh, called blackboard bold. Um, and when I teach this class live, I use that because it's can't really write bold on a whiteboard. Um, set of rational numbers is this capital boldface Q. You can think Q for quotient. Uh, the set of integers is this capital boldface Z. And these may be modified with superscripts such as the positive real numbers denoted there with the R with a plus, the negative integers there, the Z with a minus. Um, the book also gives some examples with non-positive or non-negative um, as other superscripts that can be used. Now, it's important to understand that the same set can be expressed in multiple ways. And 
so we don't want to think that there's a, a unique way of expressing any particular set. And here's an example. Um, if we take the, the set that consists of the elements 1, 2, and 3, um, well, that first expression there is in that set roster notation. We simply have a list of the elements. Here's another one with set builder notation that describes the same set. It's the positive integers that are less than four. Or another way to write that is the integers that are greater than or equal to one, but less than four. Okay, same set. Or we could say the integers that are greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to three. Okay, again, same set. Um, so just be mindful of that. Now let's talk about subsets. Um, subsets are an important concept whenever we're talking about sets. And if, if A and B are sets, to say that A is a subset of B means that every element of A is also an element of B. Okay, so to say that A is a subset of B means that for all elements X, if X is in A, then X is in B. And the way we write that um, is written there. Now we're gonna look at some other notation that's similar. And one thing I wanna point out here is that symbol almost looks a little bit like a less than or equal to sign. Okay, not necessarily the, we don't wanna think of it as less than or equal to, but there's a reason I mentioned that and we'll see uh, in a minute here. The notation with that symbol with the slash through it means that A is not a subset of B. Okay, so that would mean that there's something in A which is not in B. Now, if we take that symbol that we were saying is a subset of and remove that little horizontal bar, then that we say that A is a proper subset of B. And what it means to be a proper subset is that, well, first of all, A is a subset, but that the two sets are not equal. So this goes back to what I was saying about how the, the symbol kind of resembles a less than or equal to symbol. And now we've removed that equal to part of it. Okay, So that's a way to remember it. Um, so to be a proper subset means that A is a subset, but there's of B, but there's an element of B that is not in A. So an example is that the set of integers is a subset of the real numbers. We could also say that the set of integers is a proper subset of the real numbers because they, there are real numbers that are not integers. Uh, another example here, the, the integers are not a subset of the positive real numbers because there are negative integers. Um, and so the example I gave there is that negative one is an integer, but negative one is not a positive real number, okay, not an element of the positive real numbers. Okay, let's move on to Cartesian products. Cartesian products, um, are a kind of set that we get by combining two sets. So let's say A and B are sets. The Cartesian product of A and B is going to be the set of ordered pairs where the first, first coordinate of that ordered pair is taken from A, second one is taken from B. The order here does matter. And so the example I give here is if we take the Cartesian product of the set containing 1 and 2 with the set containing x and y, that's going to give us four ordered pairs. Again, the first coordinate of each ordered pair has to come from the first set. Second coordinate has to come from the second set. And these are the four elements. 
be a little careful here when you with the notation. I I often see students um, who seem to understand what a Cartesian product is, but um, but don't always use the right notation for it. So the elements here are ordered pairs. Um, so we need to have those parentheses, you know, with the two coordinates um, for each of those elements. One last thing I want to mention, it's actually not something that's discussed in this section, but there is a an answer in the back of the book that uses this notation, and unfortunately, uh, the, the notation is not actually introduced in the section. So I just wanted to call attention to this. It is something we'll see later in the course, um, and that is the empty set. So the concept of the empty set is simply a set which has no elements. So the empty set is simply the set with no elements. The notation that we'll often see for that is a circle with a slash through it. Um, you can also write those curly brackets with nothing in between. That's less commonly used, but it's still considered correct notation. One thing to understand though, is it is not correct to write the curly brackets around that empty set symbol. Um, because that means the set containing the empty set, which would be a set with one element. So something to be careful of. Um, there are those two options you have, but you don't want to combine those if you're trying to describe the empty set. That's it for this section. Uh, I hope you found that video helpful. The, the next section up is going to be the language of relations and functions, and that will conclude the chapter one material. See you in the next video.